one of how to record a song. Assuming your song will have vocals or maybe an acoustic instrument, you're definitely going to need a couple reliable microphones. This is a condenser microphone that I've had for years, uh, very affordable. It's going to be ideal for vocals and acoustic guitar. As opposed to the dynamic microphone, it's going to offer higher sensitivity and wider frequency response, so you're just going to get a generally superior sound. They no longer make this particular model, but there are definitely a lot of other options that are comparable, uh, so we'll take a look at those. If you're just getting started out and trying to figure out where to begin, I would highly recommend one of these. Uh, just kidding! What I'm really talking about is this. This is more or less the newer version of the AKG Perception 100 that I was showing previously for $85. You really can't beat it. Uh, it's not going to have a better sound than a $7,000 mic, uh, but it's still going to get the job done and won't break the bank. If you plan on recording your instrument directly from your amplifier, look no further than the Shure SM57. It's the best selling microphone of all time, and it's great for both studio recordings and live performances. This microphone has been used by artists including, but not limited to, Anthony Kiedis, Brandon Flowers, Madonna, David Bowie, John Lennon, Jack White, Peter Gabriel, and Brian Wilson on the vocals for Pet Sounds. And at $100, you really can't beat it. Plus you could be the next John Lennon. Let's talk very quickly about microphone stands. Unless you know someone who's willing to hold a microphone in front of you the whole time you record, you're gonna need one. Unless you plan on touring or kicking over your mic stand in frustration as you record, then you're likely better off sacrificing the durability that you would get with a higher end, more expensive mic stand for one that's way less expensive. I see one for $37.95. I don't think I've ever spent over $50 on a mic stand and the ones I have I've had for over a decade and they're just as good as the day I got them. In order to record your song you're going to need an audio interface. An interface allows you to plug your microphone or your instrument directly to your computer to record. This is one that I use. It's a Focusrite. Focusrite's one of the top brands for interfaces right now. I haven't had any issues with mine so I'll definitely recommend it. Mine is one of the more top of the line interfaces that they produce, uh, but I did get a great deal on it from Facebook Marketplace, so I would recommend maybe checking Facebook Marketplace or eBay for a used one, so then you could get 50, 60, 70% off, and it's, it'll work just as good as brand new. These are the interface options that they have for sale on the Focusrite website. Unless you're recording multiple instruments at once, you're safe to just go with the Scarlet Solo. You're able to record a guitar and uh, microphone at the same time. The only reason I opted for the 18 in 8 out that I have is because I got an almost too good to be true deal on it uh, off Facebook Marketplace. So again, I can't recommend that enough to check these secondary markets, eBay, Facebook, and you could get uh, an amazing deal on these things. But just make sure it's a third generation. The next thing you're going to want to get is a solid pair of studio headphones. These are the headphones that I use. They're the M20X by Audio-Technica. I've been using them for a while. They sound great. They're very durable. And the beauty of studio headphones as opposed to regular headphones is that less audio leaks out so that you don't get that feedback while you're recording. They also have a very flat mid-range response, ensuring that vocals and lead instruments are clear and accurate. And at 50 bucks, you can't beat it. You're absolutely going to need instrument and microphone cables to plug into that interface. I can't recommend enough the Monster Cable. I've been using those for over 10 years. I still have the same cables and they work just as good as new. They're a bit pricey, but what I can say is that any other cable that I've purchased that hasn't been a Monster Cable has broken within less than a year. And obviously you're going to have to record some sort of instrument, so I'll show you what I use. I have a Fender Duo Sonic. I have an Epiphone Les Paul Jr. that I mess around with. Uh, Gibson SG Standard. And then over here I have a Taylor Big Baby and a Fender Squire Jaguar bass. If you'd like to add electronic elements to your songs, I'd highly recommend one of these MIDI keyboards. You're able to produce so many different sounds using whatever software you have, so it's very versatile in that way. Speaking of software, if we want to keep it as easy as possible, we're going to GarageBand. If you have a Mac, the software is already included, so you don't have to do anything extra. It's very intuitive and has a ton of built-in effects. The background music of this video was actually recorded using GarageBand. And in part two of this video, I will show you how I go about recording my music.